First major headline today from Reuters.com. TV news networks hope to reap ad windfall from U.S. election chaos. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, well, if it's happening, it's happening with their permission, right? Television news networks will benefit from a U.S. presidential race that may not be decided on election night. Now, I, I know this, this is going to sound really conspiratorial, right? Because I've been telling you for years that the, the media has an incentive uh, just without getting conspiratorial at all they have an incentive to increase their own bottom line they are businesses first and foremost and so even if you're cnn yeah and and in the bag for the democrats if if, if you believe that uh you're still going to want to promote stories about donald trump questioning the election results you're because that's and, and and ultimately like you know like do you do you care like do you do you really care if it's trump or biden i mean i i, I imagine if you're cnn and, and trump remember the famous tweet where he tweeted himself and some wwf thing but not world wildlife fund this is when it was wrestling federation i think before it was wwe body slamming somebody but they had the cnn logo over that that was like, you know, like he's body slamming cnn <laughs> you know I, they're, you see, they're all in it, in on this together. And, and the pro wrestling analogy is really good. My friend Glenn Jacobs, who's uh, mayor of a small town in Tennessee right now, uh, I met years and years ago. I mean, like when I was still doing a Rock Veterans Against the War, gosh, back 2008 or nine at Liberty Forum in, uh, in New Hampshire, hosted by the Free State Project. And as a former professional wrestler, uh, Glenn Jacobs, you can look him up. And he, he said, you know, it's, it's all like professional wrestling. There's a good guy and a bad guy and a, and, and a, a pre-rehearsed script, and it's all for show. So to, back to the story, like how do they substantiate this? With few sporting events and a captive audience due to the COVID-19 pandemic, a drawn-out nail-biter of an election could appeal to marketers like the finance, technology, retail, social media, and entertainment companies that have bought debate and election night ads. Look there, CJ, on the ball. Already got that video for you. You can see Trump body slamming CNN. Now, you think, oh, that's bad. No. They, they love the free promotion of that. Like, why would they, why would they do anything to, I mean, it, and you go, you go way back, and, and, and this is an interesting part of the Trump story that is part of the genuine appeal of Trump that, that he did represent a fluke in the system, a, a, a glitch in, the, in their programming, perhaps, just for a second there, because remember, there was the link, the, the leak, I think it was from the Podesta emails, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, maybe it was some other leak, where they said they wanted... Uh, Ben Carson, Ted Cruz, and Donald Trump to be the three standouts in that very large field of Republican candidates in 2016. And they pretty much got what they wanted. They thought that they would be easiest to defeat. Now, in a sense, I think that genuinely did bite them in the ass. I don't think they were expecting to get Trump. But then maybe when Trump won the nomination, Remember, this week we've covered these stories of Trump's finances finally being exposed, the tax returns coming out, revealing that he's not worth $10 billion, not even a billion dollars, not even a couple hundred million, but might be a few hundred million dollars in debt. And of course, he's saying, oh, I'm, I'm totally under leveraged. Look at the value of my brand. And the thing is, the scary thing is, he might be right at this point. He might have come into this race. $400 million in debt and be coming out of it with a brand that's going to sell merchandise, make America great again, Donald Trump worth millions of dollars for years, who knows, maybe even billions, the value of that brand itself, who knows how many stakes and fake university enrollments he's going to be able to sell now as former President Donald Trump for, I don't know, as many years as he has left in that 
rapidly deteriorating brain of his. But this idea that the the, the, the media they want it to be they want it to be neck and neck. It's not just because they want you to think if you vote third party, you're throwing your vote away. We know. We know things are bad, worse than bad. We know that if you vote for the duopoly, you are throwing your vote away. With my apologies to Howard Beale. Uh, so th this situation we find ourselves in now shows us just uh, this other layer of the story of, of the corporate reality of what's driving politics so with few sporting events and a captive audience due to the COVID 19 pandemic a drawn out now oh, i'm sorry uh at least two networks fox corps fox news and comcast corporations nbc are expecting or already seeing high demand for the week following the november 3rd election night fox news is also offering its major sponsors the option to extend their campaigns if election results are not in after that first week. Determining the next president of the United States could take some time after voting ends on election day due to a surge in mail-in ballots and expected legal challenges by the campaigns of Republican President Donald Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden. So funny how they have to put that in. Americans glued to news. Skipping ahead here. TV news has already seen a viewership spike this year with NBC, Viacom, CBS, Inc. owned CBS and Disney's ABC experiencing their biggest news audiences in years, siphoning viewers from sports. N not necessarily siphoning. They're, those viewers just aren't there because there's not a lot going on with sports. Uh, at least not the same. Not the same. In July, August, and September, Fox News was the highest rated network in all of TV for primetime viewers, according to Nielsen. Now, even this, I, I think these numbers are really overblown. I think a lot more people are watching stuff on the internet than the old media analysis accounts for. But NBC, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox News sold out their ad inventory for the first debate, according to people familiar with the networks, an estimated 73.1 million viewers tuned into the first debate. Below the record, 84 million four years ago, a decline that may reflect changing viewing habits and an uptick in the number of people who stream content online. There you go. So this thing about Donald Trump, like when when the people who he owed hundreds of millions of dollars to saw him in the primary and saw that he was getting traction, they went, we might just actually not have to take such a huge loss on this one. Could we fuck over the American people and get Donald Trump elected president? We might just be able to. And remember, there are competing factions, legitimately competing factions within the American Socialist Party. The red team genuinely competes with the blue team, but the powers that be behind don't really care. And they want there to be an honest fight. They want there to be a legitimate competition for who's going to be president because that's their front man or, or woman, if a woman shall ever successfully stoop so low as to be president of the United States. But they want a contest. They want, they, they, it's like they have this reality show competition every four years. Who's going to be the president? Uh, uh, America's got talentless hacks. Uh, but we, we, they want this contest uh, to genuinely let the audience choose among their pre-selected candidates that they're all happy with. And then within that, there is a fight. There is a back and forth. And so I'm, I'm tempted to think, well, they let Trump come out because they were desperate to hold people's attention. They were like, well, you know, while people are homesteading and using cryptocurrency and rendering us obsolete in the banking, corporate, military, industrial class, whatever you want to call the super class, the political class, yeah, let's give him Trump. Let's get some attention back. And then they have to ratchet things up. Ah, we got to do Corona. Maybe maybe this is all. And then, oh, well, we got to have Black Lives Matter. Got to be a thing. More important, it's so important. We're going to let people protest without masks on. And then we're going to arrest parents at middle school football games for, for not wearing masks and call it trespassing. 
Yeah, right. I'm getting the feeling that they're just desperate for attention. And I'm grateful to see that their, their viewership, this is not insignificant. Seven, I mean, even this year when people go, this is going to be entertaining shit. Maybe it's enough people who have seen the Trump show already. The Trump show is getting old. If Trump loses, it might just be because someone in the super class said, sorry, Mr. Trump, your ratings just aren't what they used to be. You're fired. <laughs> but 84 million four years ago to 73.1 million this year, that's a good sign. And I don't want to say that people should be tuning out to the reality of what's going on around us. Of course not. But we should at least recognize the distraction for what it is and not waste too much time on it. 